Hey everybody, all right, I think uh, I got the technical difficulties out of the way. We are four minutes late, which is not bad at all. So, hey everybody, again, here we go today with a new stream. We will continue where we st uh, stopped the previous uh, stream. We made the interior for the bar, so we'll continue modeling other stuff for our scene. So before I go on and start modeling the rest of this uh, scene, what I want to do is do the same thing that uh, I've done in the previous uh, stream and that is drop down this list. It's still in the notepad uh, format. So uh, really quickly, this is like I said, I want to have a list of guys that are making some nice tutorials. Uh, it doesn't matter which software it is, as long as it's uh, something 3D related, I would like to know about it. A3W67, uh, nice to have you back. I know it's a bit early over there now, so welcome back. Uh, okay, so as I said, uh, if you guys know anybody who's making quality tutorials, be it on YouTube or, on some, or some other platform, drop down their name what they're uh, doing, which software it is, and which language it is. I will give you five minutes. Just drop down some names, I wanna write them down. And hopefully once I'm done, I'm actually gonna go ahead and finally compose this into an actual list, which will be easy to see. And depending on which software you're using, you will be able to find quality tutorials based on what you guys are, um, enjoying watching so here are the names that so far we've uh, wrote down uh, the first time that i actually got the idea the names of grant warwick uh, were dropped aramers 3d biz kerbel artem gugolov we have eloy andulas uh, for 3ds max and corona physics for maya he's a concept artist and then we have tim burkholz from charm for zone he does amazing videos for uh, weaponry. I've seen some of his videos. They're great. Henning, Sanded, and uh, Morton Jaeger. Flip normals. Again, great uh, videos, especially when it gets down to making stuff for games. I think. I think that they were the ones who were making the flip normal ones. There for Maya and ZBrush in English. Mike Hermes, straight down Maya, English, and you have Alexander Vasiliev for V-Ray Guide. You've probably seen a couple of his videos uh, floating around. So do you guys have any more names that you would like me to write down in this list or names that you would like me to share with everybody? Come on, we still got like two and a half minutes. All right, now to chat a bunch of guests. All right, then I guess no one will leave this thing to the side, and I guess I should probably 
to make this as a post on either Facebook or some other group where people can actually read this thing and see it and leave their comments over there and just put the names in the list. All right, let's continue with uh, the actual modeling for our scene. All right, uh, let me just clean up this really quickly so I can see more of the scene. So remove the prototype, there we go. Okay, so last time that, uh, the last stream we made the barrel for the end of the uh, bar table, we made uh, the front for the bar table along with uh, these uh, chairs. Yeah, man, I know that you already submitted. So I'm just wondering if there are more people who know more stuff and know more people that are making content. All right, so now continuing over on this idea for the bar. Let me see the folder for the ideas, the reference images. All right, so move this thing over here like that. All right, now, ideas about this bar. Uh, the front, like I said, I wanted you to follow it, this uh, idea where you have these uh, uh, clothing hangers on the front. So let's go ahead and actually do that. It's an easy thing to add. And I'm pretty sure that over here, yeah, there is a small chamfer, but I just emphasize that a bit more because I don't think it's really can be seen. Let me just sell this at this thing. There we go. No more distractions. And then out. louder. How do you mean a little louder? Speak louder? All right, here's a question. Can anybody, uh, can everybody hear me well? How is the sound and how is the music in the background? to do is give this thing a bit of a slope so easiest way to do is just uh, adding a few connects not so many so three move it slightly outwards like so just now select the middle ones again just a tiny bit more sloped out like that so when we put on the turbo smooth we get this thing with a nice waviness over here all right that's fine that's fine as well all right, so now for the hangers, they're like a small detail, but I just want to have that thing in. Yeah, I guess we can put that in later when we do the uh, detailing pass. So now, how, what kind of a bar do we put for the background? I actually like the idea with uh, this wooden uh, overhang because it can be double used to hide up some of the support for the second floor and as well as a place to hang some lights or whatever. So let's add in that back side for our wall. 
So that would be, I guess, over here. So in this case, this thing. I'm not doing a music business. Uh, give me a sec. All right, so where were we? I needed my layers for the prototype to be this. All right, so now at least I know where my walls are supposed to be. So right here, I'm actually gonna take this thing and screw it downwards just so I know at least where. This thing is going to go until about there. All right, there we go. So I know that in this place is more or less where we're supposed to be building our bar. All right, so now this is what I'm thinking. So if you guys have any other ideas or pretty much anything that might add to this scene, share it in the comments right now so I can check and see that idea and how that thing would uh, like go well with uh, this thing if it's something that we can use I'd rather go with that otherwise we're gonna go with something similar to this and while I'm waiting for that I'm actually gonna start modeling this uh, backside so let's start with this is actually a pretty simple piece so it shouldn't be anything complicated, just drop a box. So big. Now I did poly on top of this thing. Alright. So now I can see that over here we have this uh, thicker place and it's basically very smartly used to hang the TV, so not a bad idea. We could use it something like that as well. So add in a couple of edges like that. Now add in two more, just so we have some geometry to help hold this form. Put it down like that, and start moving. around to get more of that shape. Okay. Oh, actually this can be an overhang for the actual bar as well. Because, for example, if we take a look at this thing, it's gonna go all the way down. So this can overhang on top of the bar or where you put the shelves for the alcohol and put some lights in here so it's going to give us some nice uh, lighting for this uh, part of the scene which is going to be interesting to see how that thing works so if we put this thing here it would mean that uh, this part here cannot be actually as an overhang because if we do it like that the tv will not be seen so we're going to have to like find a way to work around this thing so that would mean that we can actually take this, move it this way more, a bit more, and move this thing more down. Like that. But we'll see uh, when we put the actual TV in there. All right, so for now, I'm actually gonna take this thing and drive it across the whole uh, bar. And the reason for this would be, I want this thing to hold as an actual uh, place where I can hide some of those bars or the support bars, it's the support beams. And that's going to be a nice addition to that thing. Plus it's going to break, uh, break up that uh, steel look of that whole thing. And this is going to be something like a wooden support. So it should be an interesting uh, addition. All right, so this 
way, I guess the bar testing here would be a bad idea because when you're moving, you would probably hit your head. So something like this, probably move the whole thing a bit up like that. All right, so now it's a good thing. Move it a bit up more like that. All right, I guess with as a placeholder for this thing, that can work. Now let's go ahead and on top of this thing, add in some of the cornerings here. As you can see, it has a different uh, corner and it does have some shelves, so we can put some wine uh, bottles or beer bottles or any sorts of bottles on the top. So now the good question here for at least for size would be, what's the size of an actual bottle? Bottle size. Holds for here. All right. What's the height? Bottles height. So containing the size of the bottle height, I guess from 11 to 13 inch out, damn it. And just a second, mirrors. So it's 11 so 13. So about uh, roughly about 30 centimeters. Not bad, not bad at all. All right, so let's go ahead and do that thing then. Drop down a box with about 30 centimeters to it. Well, uh, damn. All right, apparently we got it right. This is more or less the size for a full budget bottle. So we can actually put bottles on top of here, which is not a bad thing since we eyeball this to size. So I'm gonna delete this and continue with what we have here. So and isolate again, it's fine. All right, so isolate. Now for this thing, the first thing I'm gonna do is uh, delete the top part because I don't really need this thing. It will never be seen. And now for the rest, I just want to select all the edges that we will have. Like that. All right, so all of these edges should have that cover on the corners. So create a shape, linear. All right, now let's check out rendering. Rectangular and go with one by one. Mm, I can work with this. There we go now, move this thing to the back. Like that. All right, so now let's move it in and all right, make it cleaner. No, not X, Y. All Uh, 
no. Let's leave those two alone. Or better yet, actually delete those, clear all auto smooth. Alright, that works just fine. So in that corner we have a perfect cut. Here we have a great cut. There we go. I have my snaps turned on, so when I zoom in and basically select any of the uh, edges, all I gotta do is uh, right click on the snap, turn on the snap vertex here, and then when you select the whole uh, edge, you can move around and if you press S to turn on the snap, you can actually move the whole edge and snap it to an actual uh, vertex. Okay, I'm gonna leave this side as it is. And then later on, I'm just gonna uh, take this entire thing and put it on this side. Now let's give this thing a different color. And this thing can be something more of a gray color like that. All right, another thing that I would like to, oh snap, it has a one more on the top. It doesn't matter at the moment though. All right, let me just put in some uh, shelves just so I know that we're gonna have those as well. All right, so let's come over here, box them in. All right, so go with, uh, Three or five, forty or five is actually way too much. So go like two, forty and five. Let's see how big this is gonna be. Is it in the front? downwards and make sure it's snapped over here so let's give a bit of a length so about yeah I think about 10 centimeters would be fine and just so I don't have to deal with this later I'm going to go ahead and just add a chamfer on all edges small amount of like 0 0.2 even less though if I want to make sure it's uh, tension free so 0 0.5 and 0 0.1 there we go zoom in it's uh, okay all right so now let's go ahead and add in a few more of these, of these around that thing, put it there once, one more on the other side, and then we can rescale these to fit whatever side that we need it. There. there we go. All right, so select this one, make it bigger. bigger and we'll see uh, how big we, we're gonna need uh, these to be so let's give them a different color for now and later on we can just play around with this all right so for now uh, take this as the holder and delete A lot more space now. So if I return that thing, it's telling me where I thought my bar was gonna be at. But actually, we can make this thing a different scale. So when we delete this, 
actually before I delete, I can actually use this. Just take all the stuff that I don't need, like all of this geometry and this one as well. Delete, cap this thing. And I can use this as an actual uh, base for this thing. So I can de-isolate. All right, great. We know how this, how big this thing is supposed to be now. So uh, remove that edge. Now let's start adding in some of the detailing for this. Now let's see what sort of a bar is this gonna be. All right, so we have something here, which is not what I'm looking for. Yeah, this is an interesting idea when we get to the steps. Right, so from here, the big bar is allowed. Hmm. So we can have something like a case, then some... No, 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 no I'm not going to use glass because this is a bar, so a lot of uh, bottles can be switching uh, the shelf, so glass can break, so no. Something like this, yes. So we're back to the initial idea. All right, we're gonna play with this thing then. All right, so first, let me just take the bar. Was the bar? That's fine, but we don't need the prototype. Yeah, like that. All right, so now. I'm going to take everything here, move it downwards, about there. So this is going to be the case for our bar, maybe even more. I guess it doesn't really touch with that thing too much. And now let's start adding in some of the divisions for our shelves. And for it, Select this thing, connect, and add in one, two, three, three divisions like that. Now some division, move this one down to about, I guess, something like, really, in the middle. Yeah, it can work for you as then, I guess. Now the idea here is uh, select all of these uh, uh, all these polygons, inset them in, based by a polygon, so something like this. Give it, give, give, it, give it like five centimeters, and now extrude them inwards. There we go. So this will give us like uh, four places where we can. Uh, just drop in some different shelves and put in some different uh, liquor. And for the bottom, I think I just want to have one of those opening doors. But now when I actually take a look at this, I can safely see that this is way too big and it probably should be something like this. There we go. So now let's do the same thing here. Inset again, the five centimeter, that's fine and extrude inwards or outward doesn't matter because now you can just take this thing and move it and snap it there so we have the same depth all around like that it's not protruding through the outside so everything is okay all right now let's quickly go ahead and try to cap this thing with or check and see how this thing is going to look with the chamfer Flexion is fine, tension of 0.5. Yeah, this is just perfect. No big issue over there. Uh, this is a bit of a snafu, but no problem. Oh, something is really wrong here. Yeah, see, issue. Put on turbo smooth, everything gets screwed up. All right, no, no problem. This can be fixed.
All right. Actually, you know what? When it gets down to rendering, I can uh, just leave this thing as it is. I don't have to use Turbo Smooth on it because this will give us enough of a, a edge so the light can bounce off from the edges. So let's just try with a smaller amount. And this is even better like this. So put an edit poly on top of this and go from there to there. And this will basically get rid of this issue over here. So delete those two edges and collapse these three, collapse these two. We no longer have that issue. Uh, dude, I've learned modeling, texture, and lighting uh, from everywhere. Basically, I started doing this thing a long time ago, and when I started, there was no, uh, there was basically nothing on YouTube. So I had to learn everything on my own. And through the years, I've picked up skills everywhere. So just collapse these. These and this can work like that. Isolate them like that. So quick collapse, collapse. Just want to make sure that I don't get any issues with the lighting artifacts there we go. which will happen due to the smoothing issues on this thing if we leave it like this generally uh angons are not a good choice to have in your models especially and i do mean especially if they are near an edge if they are near an edge that is going to create a world of pain that you do not want to have on your uh, hands to fix so it's always best to, if you have a way to fix it right away, just do it. It's nothing too complicated, just basic geometry work well. So that's fine. And I think there's only like two more edges that need to be fixed. I go like that. So collapse, collapse. Okay. Right nope, this is the last one I think. Collapse and collapse. And this is okay. So now if we actually take a look at this thing, we shouldn't have any issues with this or it will be. And we'll see. But I don't think this will be any issues. So let's clear all auto smooth. Yeah, not bad. Let's do the more like a color. Nice, so that's okay as a the box holder. Now, I think somebody who was it? Make a window in the middle. Uh, Shinoda, what do you mean in the middle? Where do you want to have a, a window? Uh, in here? cabinet well then we can here's what I can do uh, for the window thing the issue with a window is uh, this is a bar it's supposed to uh, have a lot of like uh, accessibility to the, the drinks so if we put an actual window it's going to hamper the work speed of the waiter so it we can put one uh, we can put a case with a window, but it's gonna to have to be for something more special, like expensive alcohol or something like that. Which come to think, I do have some models for alcohol, so I'm not gonna to have to model it from scratch, which would be eh. All right, so let's isolate this. Now let's make some 
simple boxes so I can actually have shelves. There. Now another thing that I wanted to do is I want to know how big this thing is. It's about 30 centimeters and it's the height for a bottle. Just move this thing on here. Oh, really? Uh, Normal is true. All right. So this is the height for a bottle. We can just make this thing up here. And the persons I have in this team. What person? Oh, you mean this thing? Uh, this is uh, one of those, uh, let me just see, where is it, the cameras, it's, where is it, come on, that's a dummy, damn it, uh, here we go, my brain just went into fart mode, no, it's a crowd, Supposed to be here somewhere. That container. Ah, there we go. So it was. No. Okay. So apparently I just cannot find the thing, which I know is sick. No, goddammit. It's in. Really? Alright. Crouch. No, it's not this. It's not dummy, I know for a fact. Come on, what? Uh, that was a cat. No, it's not a cat. Damn it. Point tape already is supposed to find. But I know it's here somewhere. It's supposed to be the. Open up. It should have a name. It's a biped thing, so it's supposed to be in the motion. But what the hell? Point tape array. Delegate container. All right. It's here somewhere. I'm gonna find it later on and see how this thing is. Just wanna finish up this thing. It's ah, it's annoying me now. I know for a fact that it's here, somewhere in these options but my brain is just meh. It's one of those things that I don't really uh, use all that much, but still. I know you can use the U UE4 mannequin as well, but the thing here was that I just needed something so I have a scale for my scene. So I know at least uh, how big a person would be. And this is the height of a 185 uh, centimeter tall person. So yeah, pretty tall, I guess, in retrospect with uh, world scale. I got some right there. Oh, three. There we go. Now it's the helpers. Okay, it's not right. Crap, no, now it's now it's annoying. That's really annoying. 
Yeah, whatever. Uh, was it here? No, it's not. Damn it! I hate when this happens. Now that thing is gonna st stay in the back of my head. Right now for this front uh, bottom here, I want to have some cupboards like that can be closed up. Something similar to what we have here with a small curve on the front to make it more of a ship wide, uh, ship look for this thing. So let's do it that way. And box, one, two, here. Like to about there. Yeah, that's fine. This size is okay. So now connect. Right. One, two, three. This would be four, five. So we can just do this one like that. Deselect the corner ones. It up a bit more ever so slightly just select that thing and this thing up front a bit more like that so we get that look and just move it backwards a bit so we don't have that thing gaping here so now select the whole edge and chamfer it a small amount of 0.3 and we can make this thing an open uh, chamfer, like that. Which will allow us to select the whole border and cap it there. Select this one and cap. And there we go, we have those doors that can be opened and they actually do have that opening as well. That's fine. So, Chamfer on this corner would be uh, 0 0.3 or 0 0.1 actually. Tension of 0 0.5. Turbo smooth on top of it will give us a very, very smooth look. Wait, so something is wrong here. Or is it though? That's fine out there. Yeah, that actually is fine. It's not a problem. It's too, there we go. Fix the issue. But for now, I just don't want to have all that extra geometry. So delete it and Awesome. Now, for the glass uh, cover idea, I can actually just take this thing, move it upwards like so, to about there. Now, take the edit poly, move this thing up to about there, and make this thing layer as a glass, like so. I'm just gonna make it see-through so it's I can actually know that it's supposed to be glass but yeah I think this can work out as the uh, base for the bar now what I'm gonna need to do here is find I'm not sure if I, I should actually leave this thing uh, opened up like this or make it so that this thing turns 
to about there. And this thing flips up. So you know what, actually, I'm gonna just leave it like this. Let me just see. See, even at this bar, the idea that we are gathering from, it's it's an open access to the bar, but it does continue this way with something as a counter on this side. All right, let me see. Hey, Jeff, what up, man? Welcome back to the stream. So, whew. all right, th this should this should be interesting to see actually. So, if I turn on the actual size for this thing. Let's see how this thing is going to look like. If I make this thing bigger, it would mean that I'm going to continue with the bar. Oh, snap. Now this part here is where I initially had in mind to end the bar. So that means, let me just do it like this. Put one box in there. All right, so now at least I know where the corner for this thing is supposed to be. Uh, let me hide the part that again. So what this thing can do for me in this case is I can select all that. Move this thing a tiny bit more to the outside like that. So like this, uh, open up the edge poly, move it there, like so. I uh, yeah. added one edge over there. Now I just need to do a little bit of tweaking to the corner there, like so. All right, not too bad, not too shabby. Let's move it backwards in there. Everything's fine. All right, that's fine. And in here is where I can have that uh, extra piece that can double down as an actual ramp for entering or exiting the bar. And then if that thing is there, it means that the bar can continue in this piece as well, or in this section, or make this thing a veranda or some sort. We'll see. All right, so for that thing, let's just go with something sim simple. I don't need to make it like this. So something like this, a holder and a counter can just be lifted up and down. So again, with our box start, fill up, uh, simple edge polish should work just fine here. And later on, all of these pieces that I have at the moment, when we decide to start giving it some details for the structure on the interior to make it fill uh, or fit in more with the actual design for this thing or the feel for the design. What we can do is then um, make it so it looks more like it's made out of uh, wood or metal. So for now, I cannot use anything that would be something like stone because it's supposed to be following the uh, boat theme, so not a lot of stone on a boat. All right, so that's fine. Just select this thing a little bit more. Well, 
Jeff, I can tell you one thing about uh, foldings in the fabric. You can do folds with uh, 3ds Max as well. It's not the most ideal one, but whenever, like for example, I just do it like this. When you have something like a rectangle and you want to use this thing as a towel or whatever, what you can do is whenever you go inside uh, the modifier list, from here you have uh, something called, uh, let me just find it here. Come on. Garmin, Garmin, Garmin Maker, there you go. You just use Garmin Maker, like that. This will give you uh, the density for the seam. Really, just don't crack, don't crash. All right, screw that Garmin thing. Yeah, the Garmin Maker, uh, you just give it enough of geometry to play with it. Then you put a cloth modifier and you put in some colliders for it. And then it will uh, do all of the simulation and drop it to whatever you want it to drop. Uh, personally, I had that thing crash so many times that uh, I do not like to use it. That is whenever it comes down to doing simulations for cloth. I prefer to use Marvel Designer. It's a much more intuitive way of working. But that's just me. All right, now let's see. Let me just set this thing up. And the idea here was to make this thing as a counter come out. Okay, so kind of close. I'm just popping that thing out. Screwed. There we go. Now for this. We have something to place stuff on. Alright, so for that thing, detach it a clone. Now, select it, shell it, give it a shell. Let's say two centimeters, added poly, extrude. Negative three centimeters. No, definitely not. All right, so I just eyeball it then. Like this. I wanted to make it the same uh, distance as this thing, but I guess not. It's not really that important, but still. One of those small things that can annoy me. overhanging a bit on all sides and now come to think of it I might actually oh, not, not on this side on this side I have a different idea not on this side so on all sides except those so here you can actually put your bottle or whatever it is that you're drinking Fine. And now the idea here would be to have this thing be the same height with the actual height of our bar, like that. So now when I actually come in here, detach this thing as a clone, and out of this clone, put a shell. That. And poly, make it extend all the way up to there. And the tricky part is that this uh, side of it 
is actually a bit rounded up. So let's give it a bit of a geometry to help follow that turn. So slightly move it off from here. So when this thing is rendered, it's going to have that gap in there. So it's going to be seen as a different piece. And now here, just chamfer it. Again, very, very small amount, like 0 0.1, uh, 0 0.5 tension. Isolated, make sure all the corners are fine. Ideal, but fine, it's okay. Oh, actually, you know what? No, this is bad chamfer. So let's go and manually select all the edges that we want to chamfer. Like that. Okay. So now chamfer these. Again, is your one. Chamfer type box of a 0 0.5. Like that. So now when we turn on a turbo smooth on top of this thing with turn two iterations, it should really follow that curve well. And we can further show the cage. Mm -hmm. Like that. Does it have enough clearance? Yes, it does. It's fine. On this side, though, I might want to add in one more edge, and one more edge here. All right, but it's good enough. Now, on this side, I'm actually missing. Oh, okay, so. I forgot one thing. When I'm adding in those edges, if I hold on shift, it's going to try to average out the value, which is going to create some issues. So no averaging out of that one. All right. I guess this is better now. This side is okay. Uh, generally, when you're doing this, uh, don't do this. Don't leave uh, one huge polygon in here, which is going to be stretched. So it, uh, just to get around that issue, add in a few segments like this. And this one should be straight. doesn't have to bend over there. So X, same here, X. So now when the turbo smooth is on, it should be a much smoother result. There we go. The, the way that these things are spread out is giving it better. Uh, Jeff, the garment uh, maker is giving you a much denser uh, way of like spreading out the polygons. So when the, the cloth modifier takes over, it's basically dealing with triangles opposed to dealing with quads. So you get a lot more bang for the buck if you want to know. And another thing is that even Marvel Designer, when it works, it generally uses uh, triangles unless you specifically tell it to use uh, those uh, quads. that and there so now when we rotate this thing it should get down like that yep all the way to the round and 
and it goes up all the way up there. And I'm happy with how that thing looks. Just so it's fine on that side. I can just check and see if uh, jumper or if I would work just well. Zero point one. Zero point five. Oh no, 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 Jeff, you're not. Actually, that's one of the things that I do love about uh, the live streams is that people can ask questions and get uh, like feedback right away. Plus, sometimes people can ask some weird questions that will make me go like, holy smokes, how does that thing work? And then I learned something. That was one of the things that I love the most when I'm uh, when I've been teaching to people in in class. Like people uh, have a tendency to ask a lot of questions, and sometimes those questions can be really really fun. You never know what people uh, want until you actually are in a room with them, and they can ask you the well the weirdest questions which you have never thought of. that and that is the cold truth I actually prefer people asking questions there you go that's fine So I need a lighter color in here. Just... Oh, no, hell no. I'm not... There we go. <sighs> All right, so I have more or less the base for this uh, piece of the bar. Now, when it comes to texture later on, we can actually try and see how this thing would be. But since this is gonna be all wood, I wanna see one thing. Let me just check something really quickly. So if I take this thing and uh, what do I do? I jump it, right? Detach. David, uh, there are several ways of creating a spherical object. Uh, uh, okay, here's the thing with creating stuff with uh, 3ds Max. 
is basically there are multiple ways to skin a cat. No cats were uh, injured in making this video. <laughs> Anyways, you can create a different object uh, really in any way you want. For example, the sphere is just mentioned. You have the standard primitives, you can just use a sphere. And even inside when you're creating a sphere, you have a different way of creating spheres. For example, just the regular one has the problem because you have a triangle in the top. So the poles have an issue. Uh, if you want to use a geosphere, that's a sphere that's made out of triangles. It doesn't have those uh, issues on the on the top, but actually everything is comprised of uh, actual triangles. So it kind of can uh, deter you from using this thing, depending on what you want to use it for. You have different uh, types of uh, spheres, so you can use any of them that you wish, or you can just use a box like that and give it some segments, let's say five by five by five and then hit it with a um, Sverify modifier. And this Sverify modifier will make it into a sphere. We'll make it uh, all quads, but again, it's just this. So if you put an edit ball on top of it and just smooth everything up, it's really not gonna be different from any of the other spheres. It all kind of depends on what you're going after. That's for David. Now for uh, Adam, hey, this is, uh, I've actually seen uh, bars, the uh, for the uh, axis of the bars, or doors that are opening up on the uh, inwards and outwards, but I've also seen uh, doors like this that uh, raise up or raise down. Uh, it doesn't really matter. I've seen these in the US and I've seen them in Europe. So it's, I guess, all around. And these don't actually swing. They either go up and stay up or go down and just stay down. Oh, Jeff, there you go. This is me clapping for you. Whenever you go in and you play around with Garment Maker and you wrap up the density, Max likes to die. So I'm sorry, man. That's the reason I was like, that's why I went, don't crash, don't crash, don't crash, because I hadn't saved. So yeah, that would that would have sucked if Max crashed on me because I was playing with Garment uh, Maker on stream. All right, so this thing can actually work like this. Yeah. This guy is like really chilling. Here we are creating something, and this guy is just like sitting here, relaxed, legs fixed up. He's living the life of a mannequin. All right, so again, let's just do this thing one more time. Detach. That's fine. So for generator. Ah, no. All right. And that's for the top. Something is going to have to be detached. Uh, floor generator for this. Okay, now I need this thing to be maximum width. Oh, wait, yeah, maximum width 10 centimeters. So now in this case, it's going to be 10, centi 10 centimeters length. And the width is going to be a thousand, so it's going to be this way. There we go. So now just copy this generator and drop it in here paste there we go oh and by the way this thing does not come in with max this is a paid plugin this is for generator I do have uh, some uh, tutorials with it so you might want to go and check them out it's a great plugin for creating uh, simple stuff like this thing 
here. So we can use this thing as actual geometry for the planks instead of using um, just a texture to fix this thing. So we have actual geometry. So it's, it's an okay idea, I think. There we go. It's fine. All right, so let me do this. I'm gonna say this. I'm gonna have a different version of the things that I'm saving. So So this is the 13th iteration. Let's use this one. It's gonna be a bad luck iteration. Ah, all right, so let's go and open up my prototype and see what we have to do now. Right, so we have the bar, we have the seating here, we have some places for some tables here. All right, now let's address another one of the big features. And that is uh, the stairs and this overhang over here. So I'm gonna select these you guys and this thing. So isolate these. Now, before I actually isolate these, I want to do one more thing. And that is select these two. Just so I know at least up to where the second floor is gonna start. All right, so it's easy to see because this is the second floor is flush with uh, this thing. All right, I can I can play with it. That's not a problem. So again, isolate. Select the lower part now. All right, the lower part is basically what we're seeing inside here. So this is where I want to go and do the thing. I'm just going to find that. Let's see, this thing is what I like. I like to have this fence, but the thing with the fence is that I don't actually want to have a fence like this one. Instead, I want to have one of those uh, ropes hanging from one side to the other. And let me just see if I can find a picture like that. Let's go find shape. Hmm. Ropes. Ropes. Uh, what was it? This is more of what I had in mind. I want to have ropes like these that are going to be covering up the entrance over there. So this can be an interesting way of adding this stuff. All right, so put this thing to the side and move it downwards. there okay uh, dude I've, I've used max for like almost 10 years now so let's start those ropes over here so before I do anything else let me just uh, do this I don't want to use uh, actual map to drive that geometry since I might actually go and do some uh, close-up shots of or renders of this thing. So I want to have some geometry to help me with uh, the ropes. So for that, what I'm going to do is take some lines like that. I'll give it some thickness. It's a radial one, so one centimeter. Uh, radius means uh, thickness. Yeah, I think this can work just fine. I just 
check out the bottom one. Yeah. See, when you're creating geometry that's um, based on uh, splines, you always get this uh, issue on the bottom. And I am not a fan of that issue. I select those two. Actually, again. select the bottom and the top cap. Delete. Now, put this thing in here. That thing in there. And now attach those three together like that. Come in here and connect. That's right with 30, yes. Maybe even more. So we should have more than enough geometry. So now what I want to do is take this one and ever so slightly just move it off so it's not really touching those two that much. Like that. And center to object and move it in the actual center of the, where these guys are meeting. Pivot on the Z axis on the bottom. So now the idea here is when you actually go in and you put a twist modifier on these, the way that they twist, let's try and see. And let's try to see which. I think this should be enough. To look like a rope. Yeah, we got a rope now. This is a, a triple sided rope, so not too bad. What I could have done is just so I get out of uh, this issue of having to fix this thing is only a heavy poly here. And before I do anything, I'll just put on turbo smooth, give us a bit more geometry to play with. And there we go, we got a much smoother rope now. So here's the idea now. Once I have this rope, what I can do is uh, make, make it so it has something to follow. In this case, it would be, let's try something like this, a line that would go straight like that and turn on this thing. Now, select this thing and divide it a few times. So, do it easier. Divide in, let's take three spaces like that. Move it down and down like that. Uh, maybe smooth, so we want to just have a very smooth uh, look. And when we have this thing, take this thing and you go path to form, workspace modifier, pick a path move the path and just try to, yep, there we go, why? Really, oh snap, okay, let's undo this. Uh, first of all, I just wanna move this thing in position where it is, right there, 
on this thing to stay here and uh, not enough of an overhang, I guess. Right, so let's just do this. There you go. Let's make it so it looks like it has some weight to it. Like that. All right, so again, path modifier. What the hell? So path deform, big path, move the path, Y, boom. There you go, John. Now for the percentage, move it inwards like that, stretch it in. So you're basically moving it so it's within where you want it to be. I can fine tune this thing. Stretching will make it bigger or smaller, and the path uh, or the percentage will move it along the spline that you have chosen. So for something like this, I'm actually happy with uh, how this thing looks, but here's the but. For now, I don't want to have way too many of these, uh, mainly because there are about 6,000 polygons for one. So we can instance these upwards and get more but also another thing that i could have probably done is make this thing uh have a knot here so it kind of crumples down a bit but uh, since we're going to be moving it upwards as well i might have broken up the illusion so of course i'm going to save here now i want to collapse this thing actually before i collapse it i want to move it to the side with a copy that thing there so leave it as it is and this thing I'm gonna collapse to yes so now this thing is no longer following that uh, spline delete that spline and don't you dare crash max don't you dare don't don't do it Don't you do, don't you dare, don't, don't. <sighs> All right, I guess Max is going to crash. Of course, Max is going to crash. It's not even going to ask me if I want to save or anything, just, I just crashed. See, last time when this happened, I got so uh, pissed off that I swore, I said a few bad words, and YouTube flagged me. They said that I was inappropriate for everybody. So now I'm keeping my mouth shut. I'm just gonna... Uh, if you wanna manage... see now when was the last time I actually saved what did I isolate ah see I saved before I did that I'm a smart man from time to time so move here oh actually you know what I think I know exactly where this thing uh, crashed delete this thing I think it was still uh, basically had the dependency or something. So collapse too. There you go. Something was keeping it in the scene. All right, so now hold on, shift. Instances drop in like 30 instances. Yeah, of course. All the way up. No, 
I'm going to need all of those up. But. see how this thing looks in the big picture all right awesome this is what I had in mind so now this can serve as a safety net because you, you would have to be really really uh, persistent to try and fall through this thing I guess there are some well, small kids can probably fall through this thing so I'm gonna have to put some sort of a guardrail as well Oh, actually, we do have a guardrail. Hold on a second. Uh, we already modeled one on the stream, so it should be fence type one or two. Yeah. yeah, see? This thing. I might actually use this thing for something. There we go. So we probably take this and we go ahead and put it somewhere about here. this side and that, that would cover up that whole thing would just make this thing a bit bigger oh wait a second you said something uh, if you want to make build it as on the couch and people sitting on that uh, first thing jump on I yeah you can So we have this, uh, now for, you know what, one of the things that I do need for here is to have some sort of a floor, so just quickly, very, very quickly do this. So of the ship that we had. Oh snap, these are big ones. All right, so it has flags that are very, very tall, just going across. What about these ones? These are very thick ones, but going across, these are angled, small ones, different colors, no, small ones, different colors. Ah, let's just go with the long ones. So we'll put it to about 10 centimeters by nice and width of the uh, percent something like this. But it's too small, so I'm fine. Ah, 
more. Alright, slowly we are starting to build up this thing. So we have a floor, but honestly I just want to have this thing follow through. Something that might crash max, so we'll save first. And probably delete that thing. It's fine. So now we put on the floor generators. Should have been doing, which is nice. Alright, so updates are nice. Alright, so what do you guys think? Is it better to have these very, very long uh, tables or do we just want to have like something oh, even 5,000 is too much? Okay, let's try it. 2,000? No? 500? Ooh, it's, it's way too big. This is what I had in mind. This is way too big now. Ten by way too small. Ten by fifty. What do you guys think looks better? The herringbone or the front ones or the like very long ones? Maybe the Chevron, uh, the Chevron, it was more for the interior ones. Oh, please don't crash. I forgot that I had way too much geometry this time. I think Max is gonna crash again. Here's the hoping for no crashes, but I'm almost positive this is going to crash. Oh, Jeff, I'm so happy for you, man. You're crashing, I'm crashing, everybody's crashing. If I had one of those gifts from Opera when she's like holding everybody up, I would have been playing that gift right now. Crashes for you, for you, crashes for everybody. Okay, 
this is not working. <sighs> this is happening because I'm streaming live. Whenever I'm doing something on live, everything that can go wrong goes wrong. Murphy's Law. back so for now I'm just gonna I'm gonna roll with this thing for now and I'm gonna you know when you get to the point where we start like putting in some details and stuff that's when I'm gonna worry about this thing or worry about this thing all right so hmm. all right, so let's open up again the whole scene so I can see how things are just put it this way and open up the prototype like that. Now I'm gonna prototype on, I wanna select this thing and move it outwards about there. Like so. Alright, so basically with this now I have more or less the interior for my bar. And I have the outline outwards for the exterior so let's just do this while I'm here I want to see the walls these are these walls those are not the one I'm looking for so the bar walls see that's the issue though for this wall here that I created I had in mind that this was going to be one thing and this is going to be another. So what I have to do now is go in here and basically cut this thing off. So let's select that. And check it out what this thing is. So delete like that. And a bit of a problem here because I'm getting some clipping from the inside of the bar. Congratulations Jeff, you are at the first step of becoming uh, fully dysfunctional member of society that does 3D for work. So that's fine. Yes, no. So delete that thing. But don't worry, Jeff. In time, you're going to start dreaming about 3D and how to make stuff uh, in 3D. And when you get to that point, just remember one thing. You're stuck. When you start having nightmares as to how to build something 
especially if you have to do that thing on a short line or a deadline for work. And that's when you know you're really, really <laughs> into trouble. Oh, I just select. It's no longer clipping through the, my exterior wall. And this here is, yeah, this is the top. And this thing can be moved inwards, no problem. For another eight centimeters. So go and right click here on the X positive eight centimeters. The reason why I'm moving it uh, by exactly eight is just because I want to move this thing, which would be the edge of that thing, as well for eight centimeters on the X. Like that. There we go. So now we have those two moved. And I want to move this thing as well. So in the corners on this thing need to go in a bit more so they're not protruding anymore. This is about five centimeters, which is not too bad. So five centimeters in. I know for a fact that this thing here is a four generator, so we can safely just select this thing and move it again five on the positive. Oh, don't remember. Don't miss this one in the middle. So five. Okay, now update this thing with the four generators, five. I see some, still see some flipping. Very, very minor, but still. Sorry, no more clipping. And that's gonna be hidden by whatever we choose to put in there, but yeah, we're gonna have some sort of a holder in here to hold up the second floor. All right, that's fine. Now, what do I have here? So one, two, three of those. All right, so let's just do this thing instead, but move it down like so. And select those things that we don't need. Grow, grow. Try to grow the last one. Just delete. Move this thing upwards, so it's kind of covering up the back side as well. All right, we have all right, so then this is right there. So there we go. You saw somebody modeling folks by cutting tool on this on the model. Huh? Wait a second, uh, are you talking about uh, Artem? Artem Gugolov? That's fine. Okay, here's another thing that I would like to yeah, the goal of art, art them. Uh, the way that he's doing stuff is basically, first of all, he understands how geometry works. And when he wants uh, to add in any folds or whatever, 
is basically doing, let me show you really quickly. So this is what he's doing. Imagine this is your plane that you're working on. And if you uh, understand how geometry works, you basically, whenever you're playing with turbo smooth, when you have just one plane, you put on turbo smooth, you divide it on uh, by two on both sides. You put on two iterations, you divide these two in two sides. You add in another iteration, divide these in uh, four sides. So basically, if you know that, and you know how to control your edges, all you gotta do is go over here, and you wanna have a crease in here. Uh, what you do is you start cutting in. So you start with the cut tool right here, and you wanna have a cut here, so you can just cut wherever you want. For example, like this. And it goes all across. Now, if you put a turbo smooth on top of here, it's really not gonna do anything. It really doesn't know what to do because you have just one huge angle. On. But this is what you can do. You can come in here and put in some uh, edges that are gonna hold that form. So like that. On this side, another one on this side. And one of the things that you notice is that as I was cutting in, Max was trying to connect this thing to one of the sides. So I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna select all of these. I wanna try and help Max deal with uh, this geometry. We don't wanna have, have any uh, end ons around, so you just try and make it into either a quad or a triangle. Quads are better. Actually, quads are the thing that you always want to retain, while triangles are okay in certain cases, but we generally are trying to not have them when we are modeling. So basically this is what you get so now on top of this when you put on a turbo smooth it will go and do uh, the divisions like it, it's doing it previously but now when you go over here and you move some of these edges let's say like this and you move in downwards you get that creasing and when you start cutting in like Optum usually does uh, he understands that when you're using Turbo Smooth, it will uh, end up converting everything to a quad. So he doesn't actually care that much about having everything in quads. That means that he can go in and do something like this. And when he puts on a Turbo Smooth on top of that, Max will try to. Uh, work around that thing and make it into quads but now when you know how the geometry works you can just go in make some cuts that will break up the perfect look for this thing so you can make it a different depth and with a turbo smooth you get something like that so you can control where you want to have the creases I should probably make a video about how to control creasing and how to cool, how to get some uh, more realistic cloth uh, end results. It might not be a bad idea. Anyways, uh, for this thing, I actually don't want to have these container uh, ends here, but instead I want to have some glass or glass panels or uh, glass windows here, which will help with uh, letting in light and yeah that would be interesting all right but before i do that i'm actually not going to need this thing anymore so if i need to uh, redo it again so that's fine that's fun all right let's go in just need to add in something for the interior side of this bar. I'm just saying I don't want to have to leave it like this. 
So before I actually enter this stream, I want to get this thing done. So let's do it like that. Well, you see, one of the things is that once I'm finished with this uh, project or this uh, stream idea, what I have in mind is basically rework the whole thing uh, into one uh, tutorial that's probably going to end up uh, being something like a premium tutorial, but it will cover up everything that uh, we've done here. It probably won't have all of the uh, screw ups that I did here on the stream. I will know what I'm doing, so I'm, uh, it's gonna be shorter, but still it should cover up everything that I've, I've done here, all the modeling and everything. I'm gonna redo it again, but I'm just gonna know everything, where everything goes before I actually do anything else. So what you guys are seeing here live and me basically making all the mistakes and screw ups is later on it's gonna be into a, a tutorial that will be available but without the screw-ups so i'm gonna look like okay, i know what i'm doing and I'm, i never screw up it's gonna be amazing i'm gonna be awesome in that video but until that happens i'm gonna continue screwing up like this all right so i have the interior for this thing i just take one of these guys come on make another one It's the illusion, man, it's the illusion. Whenever you are uh, looking at tutorials from people that are making tutorials, they never screw up in their tutorials. So you get the illusion that they are perfect and they never make any mistakes. Uh, imperfections are always uh, good, but not when you're following tutorial. When you're following tutorial, you want somebody to tell you how you can make everything perfect and then tell you all of the screw ups that's going to happen and how you can fix those. But you really don't want to follow a tutorial where your tutor or your uh, the, the guy that is teaching you is making all the screw ups and not knowing how to fix them. I've actually uh, had uh, followed in the past tutorials like that. That was very, very, very frustrating. He would screw up something and not knowing how to fix it, and we're just like, okay, we're not fixing this. I don't like that. All right, so we can do that as it is so far. Okay, so now when I take a look at my steel beams for the interior, I see those are going across there and there. So now this thing is going to have to be moved. It's going to be crossing that over on that side. Oh, you see this thing actually goes exactly where I want it to go, right there. Right, that can work. I have to 
work around it here somehow. We make it so it's covering up this piece, but yeah, it can work. Now let's see how many more of these can I squeeze in here. Is there a way to have a 360 of an object in Maxor or Fury? Oh, you mean a turnaround object. Uh, Eric, here's the thing. When you want to have a way to like present your 3D model, I would recommend uh, taking your uh, model and putting it in something like a service called Sketchfab. It's, uh, wait a second, what is this? Trying to find something. There you go. This is something like Sketchfab. I'm guessing this is what you meant. You find a 3D model that you can turn around and play around with it, something like this. Is this it? Daru, is this what you had in mind? Yes, well, there is. Uh, you can export all of your uh, materials into uh, Sketchfab. And here, let me just see. I think I have some of the models that I've done in the past. Yeah, there's some. Like, for example, when you create uh, a model, you can export out the textures for it. And then when you put it in here, you can view that model in here. So this is a gun I did a while back for a game. This is supposed to be for a very, like a third, not third person, but a strategy game. So it's a very low poly model. Uh, plus I think there was like a couple of more in here. Yeah, all of these. So it's stuff like this that's, Usually used for a uh, low poly for a game because everything is baked in. You can go around your model, you can see how it's made. Eh, more or less, not a bad thing. You also can find some uh, places for, for example, here's a very, very simple rack. As you can see, this thing here comes up with uh, textures that you can uh, make either in Substance Painter or if, you're, if you feel very uh, hateful towards yourself, you can do them in Photoshop and then try to match them all together. But my uh, best uh, advice would be create the textures in uh, Substance then export amount and you can just import it here and you can uh, share this thing with anybody that you are working with and they can see it. There you go. Anyways, uh, time's up for today. We did create a bit of uh, like quite a bit of the things inside our bar. And also, there we go. All right. So I would like to thank everybody that was with me today. Uh, like I said, we already, uh, like, uh, like I already said, we did have some fun with this. Uh, hopefully next time we will continue modeling a bit more on of the things that I'm missing for the first floor. And then we can move on to the second floor and start, uh, start getting the, an idea of what or where we want to put certain things. But one of the things that I did, uh, and I think about it was adding a kitchen. That kitchen would probably be creating some uh, food for everybody. So this container up here might be made into a kitchen. So you can actually order up some food or whatever. But we'll see. That might be interesting as well. 
Anyways, uh, one more time, thank you everybody that was with me today. You guys are great. Uh, it's always fun to uh, do this thing. And I guess next time is going to be either Saturday, this Saturday, or next Tuesday. I'm not 100% sure for the Saturday. I might actually have to do something else. But if I do have uh, some free time, I will do another stream. We will model some uh, more stuff. If not, next week, we will continue modeling where we stopped uh, here. So cheers, everybody. And until next time, bye-bye.